The blue economy is an economy that permits us to really serve Mother Earth. And when we look at the Mother Earth from the outside, she's blue. She's as blue as can be. She's beautiful, but she's blue. She's not green, she's not red, she's blue. So I wonder how can we serve the blue Earth, the blue planet Earth, with a blue economy? That means a color that is in harmony with what the Earth really is all about. And what I realize is that in the green economy, which so many of us have tried to build up over decades, in the green economy we're asking investors to put up more capital with less return on investment. And we ask consumers to pay more for basically getting less. Now, that doesn't work when there is a crisis around. In a crisis, you need to be able to do more with less. That's exactly what this is all about. The blue economy is inspired by the ecosystems. Ecosystems that always evolve from scarcity to sufficiency to abundance. And as soon as there is abundance, there is more diversity. More diverse species will come and contribute through this fantastic cascading of nutrients and energy. So the blue economy is about generating more good, more wealth for everyone, generating more jobs by innovating. And innovation is basically entrepreneurship, taking risks, changing things around and do it better. For the past uh, 20 years, I've been looking at all possible innovations. And we made an inventory of more than 2,000 innovations that would really be part of a blue economy. That means innovation that are inspired by natural systems. Not just the innovation whereby we copy a species and what that species does. No, we look at the whole system. How can we do it the way nature does it? And out of the 2,000 examples, we have identified 100 that perfectly demonstrate not only that it could be possible, but that it is already done. And I think this is the inspiration. If I see a great idea and I know someone is already sending invoices out, that idea makes much more sense to me than if it's just a great idea but we talk with a drink. One example. Perhaps the most beautiful example we have is a Swedish company that designed a mathematical model for the vortex. What's the vortex? The swirling movement of water. Now, we all know that the river that is dirty on top cleans itself and 10, 20 kilometers later it's clean again. How did it do it? I mean, how does an ecosystem clean itself? And what happened is that the vortex, the swirling movement, pulls out air and in other occasions pushes air back in. If you take the air out, no aerobic bacteria. If you put air in, more aerobic bacteria. And so naturally swirling from the top of the mountain to the bottom, water is always cleaner and cleaner and more energized for a very simple reason, that it went through pressing air out and pushing air in. Now, the mathematical model has been developed by a Swedish team and that allows us to have clean drinking water without ever having to do sedimentation, flocculation and chemical treatment. Now, that is a very simple model that is working, it's invoicing, it's functioning, it's generating jobs. We see today a very unequal world. We talk about development. What does development mean for you and who can gain for that? To me, the unequality we have is that we do not call upon the young people to contribute to society. With 50% of the young people in the world under 25 without a job, we are looking for trouble. We are not only looking for trouble, we are wasting one of the most creative and dynamic resources that we have. So to me, development is having the capacity to respond to the needs of all with what we have. And that development means in the first place water, food, shelter, healthcare, energy. And if we are able to inspire young people that they can achieve all of that with what they have, we will have one of the biggest job generation tasks ever possible accomplished. Are they part of the blue economy? Well, we work quasi exclusively in the third world with young people. Not because we don't believe in the old people, but because the dynamism and the desire of young people who are hungry and keen on having drinking water is an energy that is irreplaceable. 
So when we're in Zimbabwe, we work with orphans. And the orphans, when they learn how to grow mushrooms on the waste of coffee, they will immediately teach other orphans. Because in the poor, for the poor, being able to avoid abuse in order to be able to have food security, once you know how it is, you share it. You don't patent it. You share it and you make certain others can do the same.